Hello, awesome art parents. Here we are, last lesson of the year. Believe it or not, summer is upon us. Um, I, for one, am kind of excited. All right, so in the spirit of May being super crazy, we try and keep it pretty easy for our May lesson, and this one is definitely easygoing. If your teacher doesn't have a full hour to spare, no problem. You can definitely fit this in less. Um, and if it doesn't work out, that's fine too. Just work with their schedules because May, for some teachers, they're looking for things to kill time. And for some teachers, they're trying to fit in that last little bit that's um, that's what they're passionate about after stage testing's done. So, you know, work with them. Um, here we have James Audubon. And um, you'll definitely recognize that name, right, from the Audubon Society, which um, is an animal conservation society that... Um, that was not founded by James Audubon, but um, but they chose him as their mascot, I guess, um, because of all of his work in nature and animal conservation. Although um, from his side, it was more about education and um, and helping map out and document the different, especially birds. He did smaller mam mammals also, but he was really focused on the birds of North America, and then he also did the birds of Great Britain. Um, so James Audubon, born in 1785 on a sugarcane plantation in what's now Haiti. And um, I left this out of the biography because really, it's not necessarily appropriate for kids, but kind of a crazy family situation. His father was from France and left his mother and um, and his, well, his mother and like their household back in France and went to run this sugarcane plantation in Haiti and um, had a mistress and several slaves that he fathered children with. And when it was time when um, race relations were getting kind of heated in Haiti, he headed back to France and he took the white children with him and left multiple, um, you know, multiple other children back in Haiti. So kind of an interesting guy, right? Um, but James and his little sister were taken back to France. Um, apparently his mother had no problem with it because they were um, quickly adopted and he was raised there in France um, for most of his life. When he was 18, he headed to the United States, um, mostly to avoid conscri conscription into the Napoleonic Wars, and, um, and kind of just fell in love. He loved New England, and then as his life progressed, he moved further west, actually moving all over the United States. He wasn't ever able to really um, make any one profession work for him. He tried a lot of different things, shopkeeper, um, mining, a lot of different things, and just could never really make it work. His passion was the outdoors. He loved to be outside, and from a very early age, he loved birds. His father has a really sweet quote. He would point out the elegant movement of the birds and the beauty and softness of their plumage. He called my attention to their show of pleasure or sense of danger, their perfect forms and splendid attire. He would speak of their departure and return with the seasons. And he, um, it's really true. Audubon was the fir one of the first, um, the first explorers or naturalists to use banding on birds where he tied different colors of yarn to the bird's legs and tracked their movement throughout the different seasons and found that birds were coming back to the same, um, the same places to nest year after year. A um, really interesting guy and interesting, he married a girl named Lucy who loved the outdoors also, loved to explore and kind of tromped along with him in the wilderness and um, ended up being like the backbone of their family. She made it work, went to work. She was trained as a school teacher. She worked and um, she and the kids stayed in a boarding house while James went on his adventures to look, look for birds and to document these birds. And um, a lot of, from what I read in the research, a lot of really sweet, like they really loved each other, a lot of really sweet letters back and forth. Um, but also just a strong, awesome woman to be able to take care of the family and make things work and let James pursue his dreams. So he collects all these sketches. He doesn't have a lot of success trying to sell them um, to a publisher in, the, in, in America and ends up going to, um, 
England, traveling over to England to sell them. And there he was super well received. They called them the American Woodsman. And um, he ended up self-publishing. So he self-publishes these massive books and he does it on subscription. And so he has to keep these subscribers happy over the years. He goes back and forth from America to Britain and, um, and just makes it work. And the thing I love is that he drew all of his birds life-size. So these pictures aren't, the prints that we have are not life-size. The book itself was two feet by three feet. Let me show you. I included a picture so you could see how big these books were. They were giant. And when he printed them out, he, um, he would print them and then have, um, he had a group of artists that would hand color the illustrations. So these books were incredibly expensive to make. At the time, they were around $2 million in today's currency to make. And then now, the surviving books, there are like 150 to 170 surviving books, and now they go for auction for like $9 million. And um, they're really, I mean, you know, really amazing. I'm sure they're amazing to see in person. And um, so that is why some of the birds are kind of in contorted positions. He tried to draw them doing what they would be doing naturally, but this flamingo is a life-size flamingo. And the beautiful thing is they are just so impeccably detailed. And it was really uncommon at this time, um, the way that they would document these birds is to hunt them, shoot, you know, shoot them with fine shots so that it didn't make a lot of damage. And then, um, and then pose the birds. And usually they were posed in really, like really stiff, unnatural, you know, unnatural positions because that's what worked and made it easiest. But what James Audubon really strove for was to, to pose them in their natural condition. So you see these, um, these birds in, you know, in a natural setting, which just made the, the illustrations really life lifelike and breathtaking. People at the time just went nuts over it. It was, I mean, you know, it was such a new thing. It was really fantastic. Um, so really talented guy. Um, kept doing what he loved. He was tromping out west. I mean, he was totally one of those. He wore um, deer skin clothes and like the trappers out west. He worked with the Native Americans. He was a big proponent of the Native Americans and um, was doing all this crazy fun stuff into his 80s when um, he was really hit a lot harder with Alzheimer's, they think, based on the um, journals. And, and then he passed away just peacefully at his home in New York with his family once, you know, he kind of, they kept him indoors once he kind of started to lose it. So we are going to, I'll have paper on the cart um, for kids who want to do a bigger drawing, but we're going to pass out these little books. And um, so these are little pocket journals, pocket um, drawing journals that the kids can take this summer and make observations as they're out playing and doing things this summer and create their own little pocket journals. Um, it's kind of actually, I can think about this till now, but the inverse of what James Audubon did. Um, so we'll just have colored pencils on the art cart and encourage them. They can go ahead and start now and take a good look at these drawings and reproduce some in their own book. But I, I know there are some kids that'll want, I don't know, they'll just feel particular about it and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So if they don't wanna draw on their books now, if they wanna just take these home and work on them at home, tell them that's totally all right and they're welcome to just draw with the paper on the cart and then take these home and work on them this summer. They're cute, I think they'll really enjoy it. Um, and thank you so much for all the work you've done this year to make art literacy great. It's one of the best programs that the PTA does, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> I think it's such a good experience for the kids. It's so fun for them to get exposed to not only some of the best artists in art history, but also to get to use art materials that they don't necessarily get to use at home. So you guys are amazing. Um, there is a little um, thank you gift on the art cart, just some Sharpies. You're welcome to take one. I figure we always need Sharpies, right? <laughs> and I hope you guys have a great summer. Please don't hesitate to call me or text me if you have any questions. I am here to help you out. Thanks so much for all you do.